yeah. You look good at 9 a.m. I know that. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, I know. My beard's coming in. I'm super excited, you know. Yes. All right. Uh, but so today, I, I really have, there, we're doing a couple different things. One is, I want to look to our past and celebrate everything that God has done and his faithfulness for the past three years. Uh, and then also, I want to dive into a piece of scripture uh, that God has placed in my heart and he's just been sowing that seed and speaking so many different avenues in my life and in my heart. And then also looking to the future of saying, this is, you know, this is what God has called us to and this is where we're headed. And, and so we're going to do all of that and I'm going to try to get done in about 35 minutes. Is that cool? Very good. And we also have a, a couple different pictures and whatnot to help with that. But uh, before we dive in, today we're going to be in Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, verses 18 through 21. We'll have the verses for you on the screens. And it's fun to have the TVs right here because, you know, I could just come right here and point all those things. Anyway, um, what we're going to do. But let me pray for us and then we're going to jump right in. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth, God. Thank you for the opportunities and how you go before us and work in people's hearts. God, and how you soften hearts to receive your word. God, how only you can bring unity and allow for something like this to happen where one church is meeting at 9 and another at 1045 in the same building, God. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your provision, your grace, your faithfulness, uh, God. And we uh, give this year to you, God, as we spent 21 days of prayer and fasting over the month of January. God, we just did this year is yours. Do what only you can do, God. And that is change lives. I pray that you speak like a mighty wind. I pray the Holy Spirit guides and directs our lives, God. I pray that I will decrease so that you may increase. And we ask all this in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Now, <clears throat> I wanted to start off a little bit uh, because of this last year. We were reflecting, and it has been 10 months since we've been back in person on Sunday morning. It was about uh, February or March, early March, where we went completely online for almost five months. And then from there, we went to Saturday nights at Okatee. And uh, now we're able to come back a little bit. So, you know, just reflecting over all of that, I wanted to spend a few time, a few minutes really just sharing the story. Uh, because if you look at our church and look at uh, uh, Bluffton or really almost anywhere in the south, you may say, why another church plan? You know, why another church? Why, why is this so important? Why should we even do this? And uh, I remember looking and reflecting and uh, my wife and I, we knew almost a eight, nine, ten years ago that God had plant, called us to plant a church. We just didn't know where. We knew that he needed to develop us as a leader and me as a pastor and all those different things, but we knew that was the end goal. That was where God was calling us to, and we were just praying about location, where, 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 and uh, we were praying about like Denver. We were praying about Boston, all these different things because we wanted to go uh, where people needed a church, and fun fact though, Boston, there's a thousand townships in Boston that do not have uh, or, yeah, a thousand townships in Boston that do not have an evangelical church. Crazy thing about. Uh, anyway, uh, but so we were we were looking at all those different areas and, and so praying about that and seeing what God wanted to do. And then uh, Jason Clark, which you guys know him, he'll be up here a little later in service. But uh, he called and said, hey, Daniel, have you have you thought about Bluffton? Have you prayed about or, or looked at or looked up Bluffton? All those different things. And if you guys may not know this about me, but a lot of times I ask God to invite me where he wants us. I'm like, God, where, where do you, want? I want to go where you want us to go. I want you to invite us there. Um, and so when we began to go walk through this process, getting that call from Jason, I was like, okay, maybe this is an opportunity. Maybe this is it. So we started doing the research and realized that Bluffton is the 16th fastest growing city in the nation. 16 fastest in the nation. How crazy to think about that. And then it is the fastest growing city in South Carolina. Uh, and uh, also and then, so we saw all that, we saw that, that's great, but what was the kicker was, is when we saw that on the census in Beaufort County, 101,000 people checked no religious affiliation. 
but they do not go to church anywhere. And there's about 170,000 people in Beaufort County. So if you look at the ratio of the people just, just in Beaufort, that's not counting Jasper County and all the low country surrounding areas, but people who are not living in life-giving community and experiencing Jesus, the abundant life. And that just broke our hearts to say, wow, there is an area in the south and that people are moving from all different areas of the north. I mean, a lot of you in the room are from either New York or Ohio, right? Or all these different areas. And it's become this incredible melting pot of everywhere in the nation. And so it's pretty incredible to see that. And uh, I want to show you guys a picture. This is a picture where uh, we were at my sending church, uh, Crossroads Church of Douglasville. And you can see there were a whole five of us, right? Like us, the Clarks. We had another couple that moved down here with us. And then my mom, Cindy, uh, we were all there ready to go, uh, wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, ready to change the world, right? Uh, but anyway, and that's the lead pastor, Greg Toller, there, and some of their elder team and whatnot on stage. And so they got a chance just to commission us and partner with us in an incredible way. Um, and I cannot tell you, uh, I've, I've talked to other church planners. I've connected. I've, I've been a part of church planting uh, assessments, all those different things. And the way that Crossroads has has partnered with us and sent us is pretty incredible. Um, they, they, everything from financial to sending teams, everything is just really incredible uh, for them and how they sent us out. But anyway, so just pray in that. And as we embarked on this journey, moving down here to Bluffton, only knowing the people that you see right here. And uh, we started going and I remember um, going out. We wanted we want to be a church and still do want to be a church that adds value to our community. That as soon as we got here, we were, where can we serve? What can we do? I remember when we first got here, uh, we moved here in July and then the hurricane season came, right? And the hurricane season came in September. And so we were like, we posted a video. If you need help putting up your shutters, let's put up your shutters, all those different things. Because we just wanted to add value to the community. But I wanted to show you another picture. This may be a little early. I wasn't supposed to. But we'll go ahead and show it. Sorry, guys, in the back. But um, of our first interest meeting, our first interest meeting. And uh, not that one. That's, that's us in the living room uh, trying to figure out all this sound equipment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're perfect. Awesome. Um, so this is our first interest meeting. And I remember, so uh, that's how we started. We about once a month had an interest meeting. We'd go out, talk to people, meet anybody that we could see and say, we're having an interest party on this date. We were renting conference rooms. This is the Holiday Inn right down 278 over here. We're in the conference room. And I remember uh, getting there, and we're all ready. You know, of course, we got our signs and website, all those different things. And then, of course, you're just kind of sitting there going, I hope somebody shows up, right? Like, <laughs> I just hope somebody comes that they either said they were going to or whatever it may be. But uh, I remember there were 11 people. I still remember there were 11 people that walked through those doors who already weren't on our launch team. And I, you could have thought they were a thousand. We were so excited because 11, we were like, yes, this is incredible. Um, that, that God's moving anyway. So we got to share the story of the Bridge Church and what God had given us the vision for what we wanted to do here in the community. And so I really began to think through all of that. And I tell you all of that because uh, now we're at year three, and I feel like, does anybody else feel like 2020 is almost like two different years? You get like pre-COVID, all those things, you're like, that's still, the, that was this year, right? Like all that, and then uh, anyway, it just feels like a couple different years there. Uh, but I, I say all of that to say because we, as we think about the Bridge Church, as we think about church just in general, Big C Church, what does God want the church to look like? Because I love the Bridge Church. Like I, like, I live it, I breathe it, but at the end of the day, what's most important is the kingdom of God. What's most important is not the Bridge Church name, but the name of Jesus, that, that his name be lifted up. And so if we look at the church and saying, God, what do you want for us? What do you want us to look like? What do you want us to reflect here in the low country of how we want to live this out? And we get to this particular piece of scripture in Luke chapter 13. Everybody still with me? Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 13, verse 18, Jesus asked a question, and it's a pretty big question. He says, what is the kingdom of God like? I mean, can you, I mean, that is a power. What is the kingdom of God like? Jesus asked this question, 
And as he asked this question, uh, I began to think in my mind races. In fact, uh, at the beginning of Acts, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, resurrected, and then walked this earth and interacted with all his disciples all throughout uh, for multiple days on end. And during that time, and if you read in the book of Acts chapter 1, it says that he talked to them about the kingdom of God. He spent that time painting a picture, drawing them in, and, and saying, this is what the kingdom of God is like. If you ever want, if you want to know what it looked like, this is what it looks like. And then, of course, Jesus, you know, I mean, he's Jesus. When he asks a question, he really doesn't need to know the answer, right? He already knows the answer, but he's a great teacher. In fact, uh, Jesus asked over 300 questions when he taught. And so as we read some of these things, it's pretty incredible to see. And he continues on. What shall I compare it to? Jesus asking another question. And then he says, it is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree and the birds perched in its branches. Again, he asked, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like it is like yeast that a woman took and mixed it into 60 pounds of flour until it worked all the way through the dough. I love this because he, he, begin, he stops and begins this. What is the kingdom of God like? It is like a mustard seed. And, he's, and he takes it. And if you were to think about it, I mean, if I was teaching this, right, if, what is the kingdom of God like? I would start painting a picture of heaven. It is streets of gold. It is clear gold. So you can see the face of Jesus. There is this throne that Jesus sits on. And there are these beings that fly around him. And it's just this beautiful and incredible rivers flowing. Right. But he stops and he goes, it's like a mustard seed. It's like, think about the smallest thing you could think of, right? Almost the size of a speck of dust. And you hold it up and Jesus is like, oh, you know what it's like? The kingdom of God? Mustard seed, right? Like it's this small thing. But uh, there's a principle and a truth that he wants us to understand is that the kingdom of God is the most greatest thing that we could ever imagine and see. And you and I, when we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, we get to interact with a broken and dark world to show them God's will, to reflect God's kingdom. But he says it's like a mustard seed and much like church planning. This is why I love this scripture. The first thing that I want us to get here is believe big, but start small. Believe big and start small. Because if you remember, Jesus is teaching in another uh, place in Scripture where he says, faith, if you have faith of a mustard seed, then you can talk to that mountain and ask that mountain to move and it will move, right? And he's saying, all you need is the faith of a mustard seed, the faith of a speck of dust. And... Uh, it, it, I don't know about you, but for me, that, that's a little reassuring, right? Because sometimes I only have enough faith as a mustard seed. I only have enough. There are moments and seasons of my life where I, I'm like, God, I, I just don't know. There were, I'm going to be honest with you, there were times in 2020 where I was like, God, like, Come on, right? Like all these things. And, and, but to think of the, the, the believe big, God, I still believe that you are God. I still believe that you are holy, that you are perfect, but I'm going to start my faith. I'm going to start my steps small. And uh, as I think about even as a church plant, um, the picture that uh, we popped up earlier here, but the other one I want to show you is where we started in the Cazenave living room, right? Of hanging out. There's just a handful of us. We're trying to figure out all of this equipment. Matt was not here yet, both of them, uh, to tell me how all this works, right? Right? And so we're, we're trying to figure this out, working through it. In fact, uh, Jared Karishan, uh right here, he was uh, there. He was actually at the very first interest meeting. It's pretty incredible. Um, and then uh, he helped us on and really launched a lot of that tech stuff. And one of the things is that I realized planning a church is God will bring the right people at the right time. And it's incredible to see how when you and I say, God, I'm believing big but I'm going to take a mustard seed step of faith. I'm going to take that smallest step. 
And it's like as soon as we step, God's not saying, yeah, dream big. And then I want you in all one day, you're going to accomplish everything. But he's no, I want you to take that one small step of faith, that mustard seed size faith is all we need because we serve a good God who when we take that mustard seed step of faith, then he shows up in the right person at the right time. He begins to help and to guide and instruct us and develop us. Our faith begins to grow from this small little portion, this small section of a mustard seed kind of faith here. And I also want to show you this picture too. This is one of my favorite. Y'all ready? It's a little different style message. But uh, right here, our first baptism right here, May River. Isn't this awesome? Like we went down to the river. We were like, we're in the low country. We're not doing a normal baptism. We're going to the river. Uh, for me, I'm like, I'm calling Jason. And I'm like, hey, uh, can we baptize in the river? Like, is that like, is that legal? And he's like, yeah, you just want to look up the tide. OK, there's a big tide out here. It's not like a lake. So I had to look that up. And I was like, oh, I think this is going to work. I think it's going to be good. So we went out there, discovered what Pluff Mud was. That was awesome. But uh, anyway, we went and uh, two baptisms are right here. Uh, these are two ladies. One is a college student. We were meeting at USCB. Another was a friend of Amanda and I that we met. Uh, I think she met like a mom's club or whatnot. And then so came to church and them, them taking that step of faith, taking that mustard seed step of faith to go public with their faith and sitting there in that moment going, OK, God, this is what you wanted to do. You wanted us to walk side by side with people as they take mustard seed size steps of faith. Because God is saying, if you will trust me with that, just that, I am good, I am faithful, and I will, I will make up the gap in between. I will walk with you in that. Just trust me every step of the way. And it starts here in the mustard seed size faith. And then he continues on. Uh, and he says, what shall I compare it to? It's like a mustard seed. And then, he, and then he progresses. And he says, not only is it a mustard seed, but it's the person who takes the mustard seed and which, by, which a man it took and planted in his garden. I love this because he stops and says, not only uh, the difference is when I get the mustard seeds mustard seed size faith, I have to take that step forward. And that is where faith comes in. And it says that a man took the seed and he planted it in the soil. He took the seed and said, I see something more in this than just this seed. So I'm planting it and I'm believing that God is going to bring the rain. God is going to bring the growth. And then the growth begins to happen. The spiritual growth in our life. When you and I take our mustard seed size faith and go, God, I'm placing my faith in you. I'm placing my faith in your ways. I'm trusting you with what this looks like. Because a lot of times we can uh, get into what we would call behavior modification mode, where um, I, I know for me, I, I love to, uh, if I open up my word from showing up to church and can almost become a checklist. And uh, my kids, uh, we have four crazy, awesome kids. And um, for me, my prayer for them is that they fall in love with Jesus, that their faith is grown, that they, this doesn't become because they're at church a lot, uh, you know, all those different things, that their faith doesn't become something that they just do, that it's just something that we check off. OK, yeah, I'm reading the word. I'm I'm showing up to church. I'm doing all these things. And and if I can just be good, you ever thought about it? I just need to be good. I need to do one more good thing at work. I need to almost elevate the good things over the bad things in my life. And as long as I'm doing that, then me and God are good. Right. Like, But what God wants us to see is that the difference is, is when I read the word, this is where the spiritual growth happens. This is where the exciting excitement happens. And if you're young in the room, I'm telling you, if you ever thought Christianity was boring, look at this principle right here that God is trying to teach us. Because when we take the seed of truth that God gives us and we invest it in faith in our lives, God begins to bring spiritual growth inside of our heart and inside of our life. It's like me taking this mustard seed scripture and going, oh, this is awesome. And then I could either go to work. Or I can invest it in faith in my life and going, OK, this is what it says. Now I'm going to trust God and live out what it says. I'm going to take that, even if it's the smallest faith step, right? I'm going to take that step, mustard seed faith. I'm going to trust God with it. And we see him move. We could read a verse on forgiveness and you're like, oh, 
And it's crazy how on time God is because it'll be the day after you and that person at work just went head to head, right? Like it just went and you said some things and then all of a sudden now it's like, oh, I just read that. Okay, God, I need to, I need to invest this in faith. I need to walk in it in faith and trust you with it that your plan is above my plan, above my feelings, all those things that I'm trusting you and I'm walking in it. And the second thing I want us to get here is that invested faith brings growth. Invested faith brings growth. And I'm not just talking about like, you know, numerical growth, all those things, which those are awesome. And honestly, those are a byproduct of growing in faith in our lives. Um, but there can be a season much like 2020 where God is like, I'm, you can actually grow more in faith during the hard seasons. We can grow during that time of saying, God, I'm, I'm believing and investing in faith of what you want to do. And I love this because um, upstairs, I don't know if anybody got a chance to see some of the kids space, but it's pretty awesome up there. They got plenty of room, babies downstairs, a little nursing mom section there. Uh, but every volunteer that rotates up there, they believe this principle because they're taking God's word, they're taking it's God's truth, and they're saying, I'm investing it into the next generation. I'm investing it as parents, you and I, it goes to the next level when we take something that we learn from God and then we go home, sit around the dinner table or TV stands or whatever you may do, you sit around together and we start talking about that and we start investing in that faith and, and believing that God wants to do something not only in us, but in those who are around us. And God begins to teach and grow. And we see God move in, in ways and in, in, in our spiritual life with him as we see that. I want to show you one more picture. You guys liking the pictures? Yeah, there we go. See, I told you it's a little different. I feel, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, this next picture I want to show you here is a uh, baby dedication. Sorry, baby dedication, because we believe in this as a church. This is our heart. We've had multiple baby dedications. And anytime we have a baby dedication, it's one for the parents to say, I'm stepping in faith and then I'm believing and I'm going to invest in faith in my child. But we also as a church go, you know what? We're with you in this. We're you're not on. This takes a village and we're all investing in faith for spiritual growth for your child and for our community. And we get to walk in that. Now, I was supposed to show you the baptism picture then, but I got too excited. Anyway, um, another one that we love to do is, is one of our core values is to engage the community. We want to I told you we want to add value as soon as we hit the ground and we're at year three. We hope when if ever God's providential plan that the British church was to be removed. I pray that it's not. But if it is his plan and it would remove, I would hope the low country was like, oh, we love that church here. They were always serving, always in the community. They just didn't stay inside the four walls of the church. They went out and engaged the community. And there may be another picture. Do you want to show it? Oh, awesome. Uh, anyway, uh, Rachel and I see we're in sync. But uh, right here, the uh, this is our community. This is just one of the areas where we get to serve. And I had a bunch of these pictures, but I didn't want to go around. But uh, this is one we got to partner with Ridgeland Elementary School. And we got to uh, give uh, hamburgers and hot dogs and flyers and pray with people all throughout. And it was pretty incredible because we showed up to serve about 500 and ended up serving like 1,000. Okay, because it, like, it was like they just kept coming. And uh, Dave was on the real. I mean, we just, I mean, everybody was rolling anyway, uh, but we, we were packing hamburgers and hot dogs, all those things, and so it's incredible to see, but that's what we want to be as a church, is we want to say, we want to take what God has given us, and we want to invest it into our lives. We don't just don't want to hold on to it, but we want to take the mustard seed faith and saying, God, I believe that you can change this low country. I believe that you can change the world through this church. We're believing big. We believe that God can do incredible things, but we are going to take those steps of faith and engage our community and saying, I'm investing in it, that I'm not just going to hold on to my seed, right? And just hold on to it. And when Jesus, he even goes further and begins to teach this in, um, I believe it is Matthew, uh, Matthew 25. Okay. Matthew 25 is Jesus is teaching in, uh, the parable of the talents. And he gives one man, like he gives Jordan, he's saying, hey, I'm giving you five, right? Because your ability, you can just handle that. I'm giving you two, Colton, okay? And Dave, sorry, I'm only giving you one. But we take that and we see the different aspects. And then what God said is he looked at the five and looked at the two and looked at the one and saying, I'm giving you this 
seed. I'm giving you this talent. What are you going to do with it in faith? And the five and the two, they took it and they invested it. And they came back and said, look, 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 look what I did. I invested it. I used what you gave me. And I doubled this or, you know, it expanded into this. And God said, yes, well done, my good and faithful servant. And then he got to the one, right? Sorry, Dave. He got to the one. And the guy with the one said, I, I had it, what you gave me, but I hold on to it. Because I was, I was fearful. I know that you're a hard manager. And I, so I just, I held on to it. And I wanted just to keep what I had and cling to it. And Jesus in this parable actually calls this person wicked and slothful. He's saying, I want you to invest it. I want you to believe me to the point where you're saying, God, it doesn't even feel natural on this earth. But here you go. All I have is yours, Jesus. I'm surrendering it to you. And it's so crazy to see that it's in that faith step that we see God move inside of our life. That we see spiritual growth begin to happen in our heart and in our soul. And uh, it's incredible to see how God moves in that. And then the, this piece of passage gets even better. Are you guys ready? Still with me? I'm trying to hurry. Here we go. It says, it is like a mustard seed, which a man took, planted. He invested that and it grew and became a tree and the birds perched in its branches. I love this beautiful picture of how we can see how God took that mustard seed and then invest. And then somebody invested it and God brought the growth. The tree grew and not only did the tree grew, it said that the birds came and started to eat on the fruit, that fruit, that the fruit, that's not even something The grew ate the fruit that's on the tree and God is saying my grace abounds not only I will do immeasurably more right I want to bring spiritual growth in your life and in your heart and as the tree grows he is saying not only does it allow your heart to grow but it also brings others around of going wow this is overflowing in you can I have some of that growth? like what is this about what is this grace like what is this love like like you love you don't even know me I can't tell you how many times people have told us that over the past three years. Y'all don't even know us. And you're doing this in the community, right? And it's like, because we want to initiate. We want to engage. We want to say, this is what the love of God is like. This is the kingdom of God. And he's saying, I want to work in you. And I just even pray about our church. And as we think about and celebrate what God has done, but also as we get even further, that we want to be a church that uses everything we have for the glory of God. We are praying about a bridge community center because our, our vision, our hope is that um, the, we connect people to Jesus daily. We want it to be a Sunday to Sunday, people coming to know Christ. Sunday to Sunday, people... Um, uh, being discipled and developed and people being loved on in the community and, and all these different aspects of, hey, we want to provide affordable uh, mommy's day out daycare, right? For these young families that are, are hurting or the single moms or whatever that may look like. We want to help the orphans and the widows. We want to help provide food. We want to provide financial education, right? Teach a man to fish, right? Like all these things that, we, yeah, we can help you financially, but if we could educate you and help you to get a foundation of a bit Biblical principles that you can invest that in faith. And we, we said that, that. I mean, that dream is there, right? We're dreaming big, but we're starting small and saying, God, we're going to keep taking those steps of faith. We're going to keep investing, keep sowing. But we believe that you can do incredible things. And so we have that looking forward towards the future. But for you and I to know that when that begins to happen, God begins to grow in us. But what he wants to do is grow in us first because he continues here. What is the kingdom of God like? You guys still with me? I know I'm asking a lot, but uh, I'm, I'm going to wrap up. I, I promise, okay? I know everybody's getting ready for the party at the park. Okay. And then he continues on here and he says, and he asked, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? 
It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed it into 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. I I love this. The principle I want us to pull out of here is God's influence goes viral. And you may read this for the first time. A yeast that a woman took and mixed into the 60 pounds of flour until it worked through the dough is for you and I, we walk into Publix, right? Wherever you shop, Kroger, all those. This Kroger here is amazing, right? Like This is the greatest Anyway, um, you walk in, we walk into that store and we grab the bread, right? It's already cooked. It's there. It's good. We cut it up, maybe put it in the microwave, heat it up. It's already there. It's ready to roll. But, and this time they used to have to take it and put the yeast into the dough. And then it's the process of putting the yeast and then mixing it all throughout the dough. And then when the yeast gets in there, the dough begins to rise. And if you were to set one particular dough that has yeast in it next to another, other one, you, you would almost look the same, but as soon as you add that yeast, the DNA begins to change from the inside out, and then all of a sudden, that dough begins to rise and change. It's like it just infiltrates every inch and changes everything in that dough, and when you and I get the influence of God, it goes viral in us. God is saying it's like the kingdom. God wants to change us first, in us first. And as that grows in us, it, then it goes through us. And all of a sudden, God always, always wants to do something in us first before he flows through us. And I believe that you and I, it starts with you and I going, God, I got my mustard seed faith and I'm ready to invest that faith in you. I'm ready to walk in your ways and walk in your truth and trust you at your word, God. And whatever that may look like in my prayer so many times in my life, I've been following in Christ and and but I continue to ask God what do you want to teach me where do you want me to take a faith step God where do you want me to just move closer to you in this area or aspect of my life and as we trust him more and more we see that his influence begins to go viral through us and something that we're going to be talking about because that, that's what we want is our church you can see that uh, our big theme this year is be the bridge. And if you don't have a shirt, we have shirts for you and a party bag as you exit there. T-shirts sitting there. But we want to rock this because this is who we are. 2021. You're not going to see this go away. God has impressed this into my heart of saying you planted this church to be the bridge in this community. To reach the lost. To be there for the community. To bring people together under the name of Jesus. And I believe that's where God is taking us. And in fact, we have a series right after this that you're not going to want to miss. It's called Be the Bridge, the Art of Being a Good Neighbor. And um, this is something that God's been stirring and brewing and teaching in me for the past three years. Um, And so, uh, like I said, God did it in me first, and then he wants to flow it through us. So that's one you really want to come, maybe bring a notebook, all those different things. And as we just dive in together as a community and saying, God, this year is yours. I'm ready to be the bridge. Teach me, show me the way, God, and as we dive into his scripture. And so I just want to pray for us. And then uh, they're going to come up and sing this last song. And uh, you guys are going to sing Tremble, right? Such a good song, Tremble. Uh, and how, how God, we can just realize who God is in the midst of every season that we're in. But I just want to pray for us as a church. Because everything I was just talking about, I believe that God wants to do this in us first. And so my prayer for you is, what is that? What does God want to do in you? Is there a, a place in your heart that God is saying, I, I, want, I want to grow that in you. I want you to take a faith step in that particular area of your life. And whatever that may be, it could be um, in your family. It could be discipling kids. It could be marriage, right? Like I'm believing big that I'm going to have the, my marriage is going to be stronger this year, but it's going to be starting small. Small, sowing those seeds of faith, of communication, or whatever it may be that God wants to, to grow us in that. Or I'm going to start reading scriptures of, and Proverbs of what that looks like. Whatever it may be, we're saying, God, I'm dreaming big, but I'm going to take that step of faith. I'm investing. I'm taking you at your word, Jesus. And I'm believing. I'm going to walk in it. And maybe today we, we got some party bags for you in the back there. It's a party hat, a little noisemaker. You may want to give it to your kid. It'll be a great afternoon. Um, but in that bag, we have some 
uh, notes from people that have been impacted from our church that you can read through. And uh, because that's, that's what you're doing. That's how you have impacted this community and people inside of our church. And also in that packet, there's a, a card there that maybe you're saying, hey, I've been a part of the Bridge Church. I'm ready to take that mustard seed step of faith and I want to uh, join a team. I want to I'm ready to take my faith of of what I'm doing in that area of my life of service, right? I'm ready to take it and I, and I believe what God wants to do and now I want I'm in the overflow section of my faith. I'm ready to step out maybe for the first time ever and, and join a team and really start investing the faith that God has placed in me, right? That dough is, is needed in me and now it's overflowing where I want other people to come and experience God. God's grace through my life as well. So there's opportunity for you to do that too because uh, we believe we are, we are in the warm-up phase of the Bridge Church. You know what I'm saying? Like we are just in the beginning. There are still 100,000 people in this community, in the low country. I'm praying for revival, but I just may be a crazy prayer. I'm praying that God would use us to reach every single one. Until that number is zero, we will not stop. They need to know Jesus. They need to be in life giving community. And I believe that my Savior is the greatest thing that has ever been in my life and I want it to be overflowing in me and through me. We can't control them, right? But we can control us and saying I'm investing my faith, my life in this community, in the low country, God. And I believe that he wants to use every single person in this room. Maybe you're listening to the line. He wants you to use too. But as we pray together, my prayer is maybe you just want to ask God that question. God, what is that faith step that you want me to take? Maybe if, you, if you're a family unit, maybe you want to say, hey, we're going to pray about this as a family and ask, what is a faith step that we want to take as a family? Maybe um, it, it, it could be that step of serving. I want to join a team and start allowing God to use us or whatever that may look like. Uh, but we just want to invest that in Christ. And my, that's our prayer, God. I'm taking my seed of faith and I'm planting it and I'm asking that you bring the rain. You bring the spiritual growth in my life, God. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. God, thank you for the people in this room and listening online. God, they've impacted my life forever. They've impacted the Kazanay family forever, that you brought them into our circle, God, and we are so thankful that you connected us. God, we're praying that you unite us through the gospel. You unite us through your word. You unite us through everything that you're doing in us, God. God, I pray that you give us big dreams that maybe even scare us. That come from you of what you want to do in and through us, God. And I pray that we say, God, I don't know about all that, God, but I can take the mustard seed faith, God. I pray that you give us boldness and courage to do that. I pray that you speak to our hearts. God, I pray that if somebody has never given their life to you, I pray they have a conversation with me today. And we shore that up. God, that they are connected into the family of God. God, I also pray for anybody in the room, God, that is continuing to heal. I pray that you just bring healing over their heart, God. I pray that you bring strength and grace and love and help us cling to the promise that you say in Romans 8. Neither height nor depth nor angel nor demon, God. Nothing can separate us from your love. And I pray that we rest, our soul, mind, body rest in that fact and in that truth. God, I pray that you just breathe faith and hope and life into us. And we ask all this in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Let's stand and worship.